Hey friends, it's Carrie here with eatingonadime.com and today I'm showing you another family friendly crock pot recipe. Today we're making crock pot potato soup. It's simple, it's delicious, and it's full of flavor. You can get the full recipe with the link in the description and you can also get our 31 days of free crock pot recipes in your email. Check the description for the link to find out how. Carrie um, with eatingonadime.com. We specialize in helping families get dinner done. Easy, family-friendly recipes that will not break the budget and that you can make in minutes instead of hours. So today is crock pot potato soup. It is perfect for fall weather and it's unbelievably easy to make as well. Make sure you stay tuned and keep watching the full video because at the end I'll tell you how to serve it and how to... Um, make this even lazier than what it already is. And you guys know I love lazy. I have a cooking club that has the word lazy in it. That's how much I love being lazy. So let's get cooking. I've got my slow cooker. Any slow cooker will work. You do not need a fancy crock pot for this recipe, um, but any your grandma's dust it off and pull it out. It'll be perfect for this. Okay. Okay. So we are going to first, the recipe starts with russet potatoes Yukon gold are also very good for this. And honestly, red potatoes are delicious as well. I have already peeled them because peeling potatoes on a video is boring. So what I'm going to do is chop these up. The original recipe says for five large, mine were kind of small. So I'm doing a little bit more, give or take a few. And I'm going to dice them up. I like them diced. Now, if you let me know below, do you like your potato soup soft and smooth and creamy, or do you like it with like chunks of potatoes inside it? That's what you'll determine for how you want to cut your potatoes. So I'm cutting mine up small where they're almost like hash browns, like the frozen diced hash browns size. You do you. Like, for example, I know some other people in our family like larger potatoes because they want the big chunks in their potato soup. I prefer everything to be able to fit on my, you know, I want half of them to be mush and I want half of them to be a little bit, not crunchy, but whole, but still be able to fit on my spoon. So this is completely up to you. So let me show you how I cut the potatoes when I'm dicing them up. Now, this is the knife that I'm using. Um, it's, a, it's a nice, sturdy knife. You do not need a super expensive nice knife. The brand is, um, I think it's H-A-L-A, J-A Hinkles. You can get it on Amazon. Um, it is expensive for one knife, but it sharpens. You want it to be sharpened. So the first thing I do, let me get a big potato so you guys can see it. I'm going to take a, just a regular potato and cut it in half lengthwise. Okay, so you have two halves. Then I'm going to lay it on its side and cut it in lengthwise twice. So as you can see, I made three layers, right? Put them back together. Now I'm just going really slow to show you how I'm doing it. Then it's now back down on its side. Make sure you can see this really well. Then I'm just going to cut it usually two to three slices. So I basically have French fries, right? Like, you know, they're in slices. And then I'm just gonna run my knife across them to make little cubes. And that's all you're doing. Now, obviously, I was going really slow to show you, but as you can see, it doesn't take a lot of work to get it done. Let me know, do you like my tips on how I cut things? and the knives that I use and stuff like that. Also, when you're chopping up vegetables like this, I prefer, especially when you're doing a lot of vegetables, oops, I just threw them on the counter. Hello, maybe Carrie shouldn't talk. It's okay, I just washed off my counter, so for those of you getting mad, that's why Carrie needs to take a coffee break. It's coffee break time. Ba -da 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 -da. Mm, 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 mm. Mm 
Mm. Give me a heart for my coffee lovers. Okay, so let me take a break real quick. I really like this, you know, a nice sturdy cutting board over a flexible one when you're doing a lot of chopping and chopping up things like potatoes just because it won't slide around. You don't want it to slide around. A wooden one is also nice too. Okay, so let me get this chopping. This is obviously the hardest part, friends. And as you can tell, it's really not hard, right? Now, if you don't know what we're doing, we're making crock pot potato soup. You can get the full recipe in the link in the description or just drop the word recipe below and we'll send it to you. Okay. This is part of our Crocktober, where we are giving you 31 days of Crock-Pot recipes in your email. And people are going crazy over the free recipes. They are loving them, and I'm loving hearing from them on how much they love them. Also, in case you didn't know, we like to do giveaways for people who are subscribed to our emails. So not only will you be getting the free recipes, you will get those emails on how to enter our fun giveaways for Amazon gift cards. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry guys, I'm just getting this. Got one more to do and then we're done. Like I said, hardest part. Now, I also like to throw in an onion, but I forgot that I ran out of onion, so we're not gonna do an onion today. You could also do dehydrated onion. I know a lot of people nowadays are buying those frozen diced onions. You could throw those in there as well. It's gonna cook up nicely. Okay, I got all the potatoes diced. They're all going into the pot this out of my way. One right there. Okay, so now we're going to add all the fun stuff. We need a chicken broth. Four cups is what you need or a carton. If you want this to be completely veg vegetarian, use a vegetable broth. I do highly recommend a broth. You guys know sometimes I'll tell you when to use a broth and when not to use a broth. This is the recipe that I definitely recommend to use a broth because you want this to be as flavorful as possible. And if you're just using water, it's just not the same, right? So might as well use the broth and spend a little bit of extra. You can also use bouillon with water if you want to as well. We're going to throw in some butter. We have about four tablespoons of butter-ish. Place that in there. Let me get my seasoning. We are going to do some mix, bleh, some salt. This is just pink Himalayan salt. Any kind of salt will work. It's just my personal family preference. Okay. Then we need some black pepper. Then minced garlic. So as you can tell, this recipe is super simple. You probably already have everything on hand, okay? So now that that's done, all we got to do is add this lid. We're going to cook on low for four to six hours or high for three to four. Honestly, it'll probably be better, close, ready, closer to three hours and let's talk about how we finish it okay first about 30 minutes before it's done you're going to get some xanthan gun or cornstarch we're going to whisk that together with some heavy cream now the reason we're doing that is one of the biggest problems with homemade potato soup is your soup is runny right it's not that thick creamy deliciousness that you're used to for the restaurant quality okay, so right? back to the uh potato soup Potato soup, when you go to a restaurant, tends to be nice and thick and creamy, and you probably are not used to that when you make it yourself. One of the ways is to make a cornstarch slurry or use xanthan gum. Both of those will help thicken the potato soup and give you that nice, rich, creamy. So 
we throw in the heavy cream with the cornstarch or the um, xanthan gum, the, bleh, 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 your xanthan gum to get it to thicken. And we're going to stir in some sour cream. Okay. That's making that, that will give you that rich, creamy deliciousness. And it also helps you save on some of the fat by not using lots of heavy cream. If you want to use milk, you could use milk as well. But that's super important in making the delicious soup. If you want it to be nice and smooth and creamy, go ahead and use a hand mixer or a potato smasher to smash up some of the potatoes, which I kind of personally like to do. I'll just take a hand mixer and go through it real quick before I stir in all my other things just to break down some of those potatoes to get more of the creamy richness that I personally prefer. We top this with more sour cream, cheddar cheese, chives, bacon, whatever you like on a baked potato, this is delicious on your potato soup. Okay, so like I promised, the last thing we're going to do is talk about how to make this even lazier. The, we did this for, we have this amazing recipe on Eating on a Dime and it's called crack potato soup. If you've ever had cracked chicken, it's like cracked chicken, um, but in a potato soup form. We also have a ham potato soup, chicken potato soup, sausage potato soup. If you just go to eatingonadime.com and search potato soup, you're going to have so many recipes to try. You're going to love it. But one of the things we've done to make our soup even lazier is using diced hash brown potatoes, the frozen kind. You can do shredded or you can do diced, but instead of the potatoes, Throw the frozen, frozen hash browns in here and then all the other ingredients. And you're going to get the same tasty potato soup without the hardest part of this recipe, peeling and dicing. Now, obviously, peeling and dicing is not difficult. But if time is of the essence or if you're just you have too much to do, try the frozen hash browns and you'll be completely shocked. You're going to love it. So, OK, that's it. Super fun, super easy. If you can go ahead and drop the word recipe below, we'll send you the full recipe for potato soup. And I'm super pumped. It's, this is day 15 of Croctober and tomorrow I'll have another easy but delicious recipe for you. You guys have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye friends. Thanks so much for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss any more of our family friendly recipes. Don't forget that you can get the full recipe in the link in the description and I'll see you next time in my kitchen. Bye friends.